It's a PowerPoint. This is chapter one, section 1.1. 1 .1. um, so let's talk about a bit um, introduction, you know, the introductory statistic. And um, first you need to, to know what is data, right? So this section talking about what are data? And um, actually data is everything, you know, around you. It might be a pen, a pencil, a laptop, um, a number of wordings, um, a textbook, um, an experiment, an activities, and a group of people or a group of things, a lot. So data can be defined by um, everything around you or, you know, everything that you see it. So let me jump to right away um, talking about topics in chapter one. In chapter one itself, you will learn how to, um, what are data and the type of the data. And you will learn how to classifying, collecting, organizing and storing the data. So these terms, uh, there will be more specific in later section. Okay, so um, let me see the next slide. So section 1.1, they focusing on what are data. So what data, you can see the picture in front of you. You see the graph right there, look like a stack, bar graphs right there, see? And there are numbers. It's, Actually, this, is, this picture just like represents something about data, but actually, like I told you um, previously, there, you know, data can be defined a, a lot by people, by things, and, and number, and stuff like that. And you will learn a data analysis. This is the process that um, stat people, they do with data, okay? Okay, so here is the definition about this class, right? The statistic class. And remember, our class is the introduction into statistics. So you will learn, you will learn all the basics is um, like the introduction of it. So if you take the next class, it might be like maybe your major is that, you will learn deeper, okay? And here is the definitions. Statistics, statistics is the science of collecting. Collecting, you're collecting data. You like you write it down, uh, what you want to observe, what do you observe, you collect, you write it down. Organizing, Organize, organizing data is mean you are know how to organizing um, in order. Like specifically, uh, here you're learning about um, you know, like patient, you take, they take medication, you learn about this, you write it down in, in order, you organize it. Organizing can be graphing, okay, uh, which is chapter two, you'll learn that. Uh, can be graphing, can be a uh, jot down the information, can be uh, using statistic, um, technology, which is what our class doing. We were using, stat crunch will be, um, the technology that we would use most of the time. Summarizing, um, it's like you are summarizing all what you have and you analyzing the data um, in order, so you analyzing data like you are determined, like this group going to that category or this going to that category, is it a good result or is it a bad result? Stuff like that. Um, to answer the question, and or draw the conclusions. Okay, so this process is like, um, it's like a big picture for you to see it, how that people are doing. And learn specifically, you will, we will jump to each section by section. Next slide, why do we care about statistics? Statistics allow us to explore the world around us. 
Right? You might wondering like right now, um, uh, we have pandemic COVID um, coronavirus. Uh, you might thinking of like how many people really got affected by COVID nineteen, or like how, what are the treatment for it, and how many vaccines that they are, you know, try to. Um, make it to people to use and stuff like that. So each story, they consider like um, a research, okay, a story, different story, different research. And um, uh, we will we, we use evidence to check whether our beliefs are true, okay? And um, find the patterns to lead to discovery, to discoveries. Actually, every, um, everything, when you want to get what happened next, you need to look back the patterns, right? Like, if you are, you look back the patterns so that you can estimate what will happen next. So it will be based on patterns and share new discoveries with others. Like you can share what you found. Is it a is good uh, result or bad result? Like why is that happen? So you share so that you take note yourself in order to do investigation more. Uh, let's keep in mind the following. Statistics must be used carefully. Actually, um, in order to use carefully, um, to me, I think uh, the software will do the best, my personal thinking. Um, and because if we are observed by eyes, we're collecting uh, data data. If we compute by hands or do things by hands, um, we might left out some data. So that's why technology come in to help us. Uh, people use ti 84 and StatCrunch or Google Doc or Excel and more. However, um, like uh, like this state, they just like kind of want us to keep in mind that um, for Stat, like they um, we need to use that carefully. Inappropriate use will result in inaccurate beliefs. Okay, so we have to be careful, right? And remember when you do a research on something, you try to focus on that things only. You don't like, you know, thinking about different subject, different topic and research at the same time. So do one topic at a, at a time. Results are always uncertain. Of course, even uh, when we are, you know, collecting data and investigating it, um, all the time, stat, mostly you are guessing, you're estimating. So the result is might be close to the actual situation. Um, and th this, this, this is how, this is why it's that it's always uncertain. Um, statistics rests on two major concepts. So there's two major concepts. The first concept is variation, okay? Uh, variations, and uh, right here it say differences or changes in an item. And the example they given us, right here you see the word congratulations. Every single letter, they have different shape. And so C look like a big C, and small O and small N and long G, long tail like that. So this is just like an image helping you to understand stat. Thinking about stat is not like um, just the wording, the same size, no. Stat very different, they, they change a lot. Um, here, they, so in reality, of another example in reality is um, about the weight. If you're talking about the weight, that's the changes um, in the way of 
everyone or maybe yourself in um, a month, for example. So your weight will be changing every, uh, every, every day. So that is one of the example. So here, this word is just letting you know, like that is very like um, difference. They are um, a, talking about a lot of things. Data. So the second concept will be data. Okay, uh, data. Um, where do you get data? So data, the is the observations gathered to draw conclusions. So data, like I, I tell you, depend on you. You are want to um, talking about um, the weight of the of the all of a group of people or the height of all of a group of people. So uh, you observe and you measure it and uh, you do collecting all the data. So those are your, um, you're talking about data. Okay. And the example for data is below. It, here they look like they given you, they given us four numbers. So there's four numbers, they don't have um, they didn't say anything. So, so in general, yes, they are data, but in order to specifically uh, talking about something, usually they will, um, it's followed, this number will be followed uh, in, by units, like or by name, by units. Um, for example, you can thinking of this number present for um, kilogram of, uh, um, a kids or many kids, right? Or people might think this number can represent money, like how much money you earn um, uh, in, a, in a week or something like, or in a month. For example, you can, you, you know, thinking about this in thousand dollars for every month. And some people might thinking about this will be um, like right here, say birth weights. So birth weights can be in pounds or in ounces, right? So they can think of anything. So again, um, they can, you can base on the story that they are talking about. So they will give us a complete story. Um, but here, the purpose on this is they are talking about data, data can be anything it can be anything and remember units matter for some uh, uh, some number like this data analysis data analysis is the process of examining collected data to look for patterns or numerical indicators that captures the essence of what the data is telling you, is telling us. Okay, so anyway, here is one of the um, the concept talking about if you are um, talking about data analysis, we're thinking about the process, okay, to look for patterns, to draw out, to help us draw out a conclusion better. So I'm um, just finished 1.1. It's short, right? So, and remember, when you read the textbook, there will be more, um, more like vocab, vocabularies for you to understand more about that. Here is the PowerPoint slides is summarizing all the main idea only. Okay, if you want to investigate more about this process, please jump to your textbook, read over it. Thank you. And now I would like to jump to one part two. Let me close this. In chapter one, we have five section and we are right now on section one part two. So one part two, you are learning about classifying and storing the data. That this is two main idea for us today. Um, classifying, 
how do you classify your data and how do you store your data? And we have the below here, the keywords is data resources and classifying and storing data. So let's jump to the third slide. So data sources, you will learn two sub vocab in here, population and sample. So what are population? So population every time uh, we are talking about population is all the most of the time is represent a big group, a very huge group. It's a collection of all data value that ever will occur for a group. And population all the time difficult for us to obtain all of this information because for the population, because it's too large, it's a very huge group. You never estimate it 100% correctly. So that, so how could we estimate the correct, um, you know, like percent or um, co correct conclusion for the entire population? In order to do that, stat people, they, jump to sample. So sample is a small group, it's, it's a smaller group. They pick it out from the entire population. They, so they go to the entire population and they chose, they, they, they're choosing or they pick out some of the people. It might be like less than 300 or um, the amount of the, the people or amount of things that they can, um, you know, easily observe and investigate on that group. We call that sample. So sample is a subset of the population. Okay, the word subset is mean the smaller group. The smaller group they're taking off from the population. And sample represent the population at large easier to obtain this information, like I just explained. So for example, let me annotate this for you to see it. So I'm pretending. So this whole big group represent for the entire school that you are attending in. And if the researcher, they want to investigate if the whole school having COVID-19 or not, then they, how many percent of the people are in the, this entire school having COVID-19, what do they do? They will take out a sample, okay? That's the, the small circle, represent for a sample. And then they will make a test on this group of people in order to estimating how many people got affected in the, in the whole entire school, okay? So the entire school will be called population and the smaller group right here will, call, will be called sample. So let me move on to the next slide. Slide number four, here is the example for us to look at. Suppose you want to know what the predominant hair color in your country is. So you survey a random sample of about 2,500 people in your country, asking them about their hair color. So in order to do this uh, investigation, People mostly using a survey online or on paper. They send out they send out letters to a lot of family and um, testing you know individual of the people stuff like that. Or they do a survey online by we are using we're doing survey um, using Google. And um, so the question is if they given us the story. They want us to figure it out. The population, the sample, 
and what are the data. So in order to do this, first you need to read the story and understand the keywords. So the populations right here in this case, you, we are talking about what? The entire people, right? The entire people in your country. That's your population. And the sample would be what? Will be 2,500 people in a country. How about what the data? What they really looking for? What they really want to know? The hair color. So the data in this case is the hair color, correct? So again, data instead is not just talking about a number, but it can be about things, about people, about a group of people, and it can be anything. So in this case, the data will be hair color. That's what's collected. So here is the next slide. This slide given us a solution. So as you can look at this here, all of the people in the, the country, sample will be 2,500 people survey and the data collected, they want to know about the hair color of each person. So now we jump to classifying data. Variable. So let's talking about variable. So variable, we have two types. And what is what is variable? So variable actually is the characteristics of people or things. Okay, and we have two types. The first type they list out as categorical. So some other textbook categorical can be, they call qualitative variables, okay? And this categorical in this textbook, they don't use like quali, 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 I'm sorry, qualitative, they don't use that word, but they're using categorical most of the time. Describe, this categorical describes a quality or class. It can be numbers, but no arithmetic possible. So what does it mean over here? It means if they're talking about zip code, for example, my zip code I'm living right now is 95121. It's a number. And other people live different area. Their zip code is 95122. Or another group of people next to it, right? Around it. So it might be have different zip code number and so on. So we are having too many different zip code, but if each zip code represent for a group of the people in that area, yes, it's number, but we still have to list the zip code in a categorical because the zip code here represent for a lot of number, a lot of people. Hair color, of course, will be listed in under categorical variables. All letter grade, A, B, C, D, F, they all have to be listed in categorical because why? For example, for letter grade A, not only you getting grade A, but all the other students do well in the class will also get an A. So letter A, letter grade A, in this intro stat here, many people of you did well on the test and everything. Of course, you've got an A. So this letter A here represent not only, only one individual, but represent for a group of people who did well in the class. So how about numerical? So numerical variables, some other textbook will have another name is quantitative variables. So this is describes a quantity or measurement. 
So the word measurement here is mean something changing all the time. Because when you measure something, right? So if you measure this table and you're having different measurement and you go to the next table, have diff, diff, different size and you measure it, or you may be measuring your height, the height of each of you in this class. For example, every one of you represent different height. you got your own height and you got your own weight would be another example. And even you got your own income. Okay, income can is one of the example of numerical variables. So right here, they're giving us temperature, height, or the length of something. Here is the example for you to look at. So let's classify the following variables as numerical or categorical. So now let's take a minute thinking about this question. Are you poet? And try it on your own. What do you have? Okay, so let's go over this together. We have many variable underneath in this table. The height of the bridge, what do you think? Yes, it should be numerical variable. GPA, what do you think? Will be numerical, right? Because your GPA is a number. So every one of you have different GPA and your GPA can be changing. Not all the time your GPA will be 3.0 or 4.0, correct? So sometimes you get 3.5 or 3.89 and the next semester you did, you did well, you got all A, your GPA might be changing, go a bit up will be like 3.9 or something, stuff like that. So your GPA changing will be listed under numerical variables. Letter grade in a class. Letter grade in a class will be categorical. So hours worked each week. The hour you work each week should be numerical because for example, today you work like five hours, tomorrow you work like um, you work over time, for example. So it's changing. Type of the pets you own. The type of the pets or cat, dog, etc. So this will be listed under categorical. But if they say the number, number of pets you own, then you need to list it under numerical data. Similarly with flower varieties planted in the garden. So this is flower varieties will be listed under categorical. If they, they say numbers of the flower, stuff like that, planting the garden, then you should list it under numerical data, numerical variables. Here is a solution. Let's double check again. Letter grade is categorical, type of pet is categorical, Flower varieties will be categorical and the rest will be numerical data. So you understand it? Here is the here is harder example. Suppose you are interested in the crime rate and wreck of each of the 50 US states. You obtain the information in the following table. So let me open this up. Okay, let me copy and paste it. Okay, let me copy it. So I will, I will paste it later, but right now, please look at the following question. They want us to identify the population sample variables and type 
And what do we call the number in the table here? And what are some things you might want to know about this information? Question of interest. So we having the following. We got the state, we got Alabama, Alaska, California, Idaho, and crime rate for each state and the rank. Okay, so our job, we have to look at this table, right? And this link to tell, but mostly for, for this link is, uh, can help you to look all over all 50 states. Um, and that is one of the population. And the sample will be this four state, they take it out. And variable, variables in type, is your job to understand what is the variables in here? Is it this number is a variable 6AA? Or is it the state? Or is it crime rate or rank? Or, or is it all of this? So you need to know what should you write it down, okay? So in order to do this, you need to understand the previous slide. What does it mean vari variables and how many types? So right now, I will copy and paste so that you can see what do you have this link. So we all have, um, so this is, uh, they collect the data using StatCrunch. So that crunch it will be the software that you, we're going to use for the entire for class. So let's say here, auto state, the rate, all of it, the rank. Let me see, is it enough, uh, all 50? So they've got here 51. Is it because of what? Okay. Got Alabama. So actually we got 51, huh? Anyway, okay, anyway, it's okay. So if you're talking about the population will be all of these states, right? And the variable, my personally, I will list my variable. I found three variables. I have state, I have rate, I have rank. So, but sometimes people don't really care about this column because it's already pulled out and, you know, you know, they listed as sample. But to me, I want to repeat it. So I will make it state to be one of my variable. And this will be categorical variables. Rate, rate you see here, crime rate is, they are all changing. They might increasing in the future, or might, they might decreasing in the future, right? So this rate to me will be called numerical data or numerical variables. The rank, the rank for example of this one, each state they got specific position in the list. So the rank right here is one of the example like letter grade so i think i will list it under categorical data but i have to double check it so let's double check it the population will be the entire states so sample will be this four variable as in type i just identify state crime rate rank to be the variable and the type i already listed out State will be categorical, crime rate will be numerical, rank will be categorical. And the number that I will be called in this, I call this data. And what's something that you, you question about? You can question anything. That question is just open question. You can write whatever you want. So let's see right here, we did counted 51 states that we saw uh, in the link. But here it doesn't matter, you can write the entire state in the US or because it's already listed, 
50 at the beginning, you can write that as the population. That's fine to me. The sample will be Alabama, all of these four states. Variable is in type. So right here, they don't repeat the state, but I do. So right here, crime rate will be numerical. Rank will be categorical. But to me, I will put more as state will be categorical. Number in the data will be called data, right? And here this, you can write whatever you question about to be, to answer that question. All right. So now you're learning about storing data. So storing data instead, um, they are using the word coding. So coding is very simple. If you focusing on um, something is two, they're coding as one. And something is wrong, they're coding as zero. Or like this, coded data, using the numbers to record categorical data. As you notice on the right side, they talk, um, if they, they coding, they want female to be show. Then everyone, every people, every person is female, they coding at number one, as true or yes. And zero as no, or you can read zero. So this person will be male and the rest is one one. That's mean it's female, all of this here. So let's count. So if they given us this example, you will see one, two, three, four, five, five female and one male in this case. You can read the data like that. So coded data can make reading the data easier. Gender becomes female zero or no. And hold on, let's see. Gender become female. So they should, you know, enter down. No is zero. Yes, female is a one. That's how you read it. So now storing data, they have another type we call stack data or unstack data. So stack and unstack, you will see a lot of later chapters that uh, when you figure it out, when you learn how to find probability and um, other situations for all graphing. For storing data, we got stack. So how do we, they call stack data? So stack data, um, actually data value store in a spreadsheet format or we, they call tables. Each, gr each row contains data for a single individual. Uh, can store many variables. Like you look at this example right here. So this is stack data because, so, so for the weight right here, you notice, for the weight right here, they got um, all the value of for the weight and female, um, this is weight, um, one is present for yes, for female, zero is for male, and you see the weight. It's look like they, they're talking about the birth weights right here, right? Uh, smoke, um, smoke here, they're talking about the mother, uh, smoke or not smoke. And zero here is for, for no, one here is for yes, and so on. So right here is the example that's explained this table. Its row corresponds to one infant. The variables will be birth weight, okay, gender, and smoking status of the mother. So this we call stack data. It's kind of related of each other, see? We call stack. This means every single column here. They are related. So, but they related horizontally. So each individual, this all will be related. And second box right here, like 0 0.88, and female is no, um, smoke is one right there. So the, here they are talking about one individual. So we call this is stack data. Unstack will be opposite. So here is the one of the unstack example. Unstacked data, data values are stored in two columns, two separate columns. Each column talking about um, that group. Or, um, so they are separate. Each column is a variable from a different group. Can only store data for two variables. Okay, only two variables, you see. Info in a row does not correspond to the same individual. 
So here is one of the example. Men's height, got 70, 68, 71. Women's height, you got 59, 70, 61, 62. So the total of the people you can count is how many? Seven. Three men and four women. So they are separate, so we call that unstack. I'm just finished one part two. I hope you understand the videos. And if you have questions, please email me. Thank you. So let me close this. So don't say. Right now, uh, I would like to jump um, to one part three. So one part three, as you notice, we only, only have five slides. So very short, that's why I try to make it in one video. So section one part three, investigating data. So for the first slide right here, is telling the whole section already. So you see the picture on the right side right here, you see? Okay, so this picture represents for the entire one part three. Actually, uh, this is called the data cycle. And what is it? So the data cycle is um, for, in order, in order to investigating data all the time, the first thing you are doing is you wondering, you questioning. You ask questions, right? You all the time ask me any question first. And then you observe and then you having some data. You consider the data, you do research on this and stuff like that. You, you um, kind of care about this data. And then because you care about it, so now you want to sit down and analyze it by graphing, by using technology, by jot down on your paper, drawing, and do all kind of thing. And then you want to draw out a conclusion and you want to interpret that data. You understand or oh, what does it mean? What does this number mean? What does this keywords concept, everything. So you interpret that. What does it mean when you're collecting all of it so that you can draw out a conclusion and you keep doing this cycle you keep, and then you keep asking questions and you're going, um, you know, over this steps by step again. So that is, we call the data cycle. And this is the way how you investigating the data. So let's jump to a bit detail about um, definition about this circle. Interacting with data. This diagram represent the cycle of a statistical investigation. We got actually four steps. The cycle revolves around the research topic. That can be broad, serious, um, or actually it can be anything, right? So they, all the time you're questioning it. And um, to follow the step as the cycle, the data cycle, all the time you need to ask questions um, and right you us a bit hint like is it important to ask good question um, and yes right Be, because you are if you focus focus on um, the main idea is helping you to figure out more data to answer that question second consider data determine which data is available to answer the question it looks like you're thinking about you write an essay you got a topic and you want to focus on that topic you got question on that topic and you try to find um more fine details to support that topic right more or we call supporting details Analyze data, so begin to visualizing the data, right? You're analyzing it, you be more be careful. A lot of example, a lot of experiment. Um, uh, to me, I think it's look like you're writing an essay with these four steps. Interpret the data, it's like you are starting writing your conclusion. So I'm finished one part three. 
um, and I hope you enjoy it. Now I would like to jump to 1.4. Yes, I know it's short. So here, all chapter one is mostly like, like this definitions. You not actually uh, do things um, yet, but you kind of getting to know what is that is. And for this one, we only have three slides. So 1.4, you now starting uh, learning about um, kind of um, understand how to find the percent by looking at two-way table uh, right here. Um, I'm having the following, the gender and uh, handedness of students in a class are recorded in the table below. We have male, the left hand for male is 10, pe 10 people, the right hand people who, who hand written um, is 40, and for female, we have five left-handed and we have 35 right-handed. The question, uh, what is the percent of the class is left-handed? So in order to answer this question, you, un you need to understand some keywords in here. So let me annotate this for you to see it. So the keywords right here, um, see the class, let me see, color. Draw. This is the keyword they talking about the entire class. So, and again, remember, so when you find probability or percent all the time, you look for the, for the, it would be the fraction or either percent or fraction is five to me. And um, they talking about the, the entire class, of course they have uh, more people, it's like the total of the people in the class. And they want to know only the, the one who are left-handed, okay? So compared to the number of the whole class and the number of who are left-handed, what do you think will be denominator and what do you think numerator? Remember, in stat, all the time, um, so you should make the bigger number become denominator. So in this case, the, the total people in the class is how much? Let's count. The total of the people in the class. So let me see, let me make a, a line right here. So I will find a total, male is 50. Female is 40. So male is 50, female is 40, so total is 90. The whole class will be 90. So you will write as 90. Now they have one to focus on left-handed only. So left-handed, here is a column for left-handed. Here is a column for right-handed. So you are focusing on left-handed is total is what? 15. So you, now you write 15. So this is the solution. This is the, the, uh, the probability uh, of the class is left-handed is 15 over 90. So here they're talking about percent all the time. So if you want to convert this into percent, you need to multiply this by 100% have to be including the notation percent. Because if you don't, then it's become 100, not one. Because 100% actually is number one. Okay, if you learn algebra, you will know this. So 100%, so that's the reason why if you want to convert this into percent, then you need to multiply with 100%. This is actually number one. Right, that's why if some people accidentally only give me 15 out of 50, uh, uh, 15 out of 90 like this, I still consider this is correct. However, you have to be careful in the future. All the time, we want you to simplify and answer the correct, um, in, in the correct uh, form. 
Uh, but with me, if you take the class with me, I'm fine with that. If you're in reverse or you forgot it, I'm fine with this. I'm fine with this solution too. Because this percent, 16.7% right here, or 15 over 90 times 100% here, or 15 over 90 like this, they are all the same. Or some people write as 0 0.167. It's still correct. Okay, just let you know that. But it's, it's nice if you are, uh, you know, write more formal like this. But like I said, I'm flexible, I'm fine with any form. But I prefer fraction more. Uh, I prefer uh, you write in fraction like this more because uh, uh, so that you all can stick in one form, one form, so. Okay, so let's move on. The next slide is the next question. Let me erase this. So now your turn to do this on your own. I would like to give you a couple minutes to try it. Okay, class, oh, do you understand it by yourself? So let me go over this with you. So let me annotate. So draw. So what are the keywords in here? So the keywords, they're talking about the, the, the males, right? So the male is right there and left-handed, okay? So the denominator would be the total of the male, which is, what is it? 50, so you write 50 as the denominator. Left-handed is how many male left-handed? 10, so you write 10. So you, the, your solution will be 10 out of 50, or if you simplify, it would be one out of five, or if you want to convert into percent, you need to multiply with 100% to get 20% like this. Or some people will write as 0 0.2. It's still fine. So we are finished 1.4, and I hope you understand the section. Um, there will be more practice in the textbook and from the homework and quizzes for you to spend time and practice on it. So let me close the section 1.4 and jump to 1.5. 1.5 is Let me see. So 1.5 the main idea is you were learning about observational study and control experiment. So for this two, I would like you to take a minute to read this first. All right, so in this case, before you, we jump to this example, I would like to explain to you um, the definition about the observational study and the control experiment. Actually, if you take um, the advanced stat class, you will learn more about the uh, subset of 
each of the study, observational study, they have two other category and control experiment, you got um, some subcategory for you to understand deeper uh, situation. But here is the intro class. So I would like to explain kind of um, the overview, overall definition for observational study. So um, for the observational study, um, in this type of study, the actually the sample population, you know, the sample population is not manipulated. It means people don't touch or don't, in, um, you know, don't investigate or changing anything about the study. Um, it's meaning that is a being study as it is, right? So no changing. Um, and, and usually the researcher do not change or influence the sample population with the study at all. They just watch, okay? Watch and observe and record and draw a conclusion, okay? So that is the observational study. And about the control experiment, the um, for uh, for this one and is opposite with observational study. Um, for this one, usually a researcher will manipulate the uh, sample po population, and they usually uh, divide the population into treated group. Um, one group is might be um, is the experimented on and a control group uh, uh, which is the group is not experimented on um, and they observe the cause and effects of it and they want to see the relationship of it uh, so after they conducting uh, the experiment usually the researcher can be able to uh, re redo retest the study uh, by changing uh, different aspect or different method uh, to get more accurate result, um, then they can draw out a conclusion. For the uh, for this experiment study, it is uh, usually it will be like uh, um, more complicated. Um, I can give you another example like this. Uh, for example, um, uh, um, the doctor A, um, uh, he he want to give the, the medication to his patient, um, his patient B, okay? Dr. A uh, assign a medication um, A to his patient and he uh, observe and uh, record and um, kind of, you know, like uh, checking if his patient taking this medication A is it good or bad and how much percent good, how much percent bad, and then he recorded it. And he he want to make a big change on this, um, uh, on assigning uh, the medication for his patient. So he, um, so when his patient come back to him uh, to, to, you know, like double check with the result, then he want to assign medication B, okay, which is another medication to this patient again. And want, he want this um, patient want uh, to take medication B and he want to see uh, the result and he want to see what will the medication B, is it better than medication A or medication A is better than medication B. Uh, so he want to, to see that. So this doctor want to make a change on, on assigning medication for his patient and so on and so on. And so that he can, um, the good, the best medication for this patient. So that is one of the example about the um, experiment study, okay? And like for this case, we'll come back with this question. Our researcher was studying the effect of fast-paced uh, cartoons on children attendance uh, span. So one group of children, children was assigned to watch a fast-paced cartoon and a second group 
was assigned to read a book. So this is one of uh, the example for experiment because they um, tried to divide into two groups, right? Uh, one um, one group they do they has uh, experimented on, and another one is not. Then they want to see uh, the result, and they can compare it the relationship between these two. Um, after 20 minutes, all the children took a test measuring attention span. So, and you can, um, so the conclusion would be the control experiment. As I, I, I give you the, uh, um, the definition about the differences between observational study and, and control experiment. And again, if you want to understand more of this concept, please go back to ebook, to your textbook and read this section. Um, I give you the summarize already and um, I hope you, um, you understand it and you can see more example in a, in a textbook too. Uh, so in short, in short for observational study, the researchers do not assign choices. They only observe what is already happening, okay? Just observing. For experiment study, the researchers man, manip, manipulate, I'm sorry, manipulate factors. Um, they will make a change or they can create a treatment or, um, or make a change, okay? And so that they can compare the responses of the changes. Like, um, I think it's kind of uh, a, a lot of, uh, you can understand um, kind of different um, definitions of maybe longer in a textbook or something. Um, but I hope that is the best uh, definition that make you understand this section. Um, and for 1.5, you need to, un you should understand um, the concept of observational study and control experiment. And again, this is one of the concepts is that um, there will be no compute or um, using technology for this one. Okay, class, I'm finished uh, 1.5 or the whole chapter one. And I hope you understand this chapter one quickly. So the main idea, look at um, every single PowerPoint slide, they have their uh, some, um, you know, strong, concept that you need to know, uh, which is uh, my personally like um, the concept in 1.4 because in the future you need to learn more uh, advanced about finding probability that on, on two way table like that. And population sample, you need to know that you need to know variable, you need to know how to classify variables and type of it um, and uh, figure it out um, the, um, let me see, I forgot. Uh, yeah, you need to figure it out uh, how to um, look at the, um, the hint, the keywords so that you can um, collect out, you can pick out the correct data. Anyway, you will learn more and more later in the following right now, mostly in this chapter one is about definitions. All right, class, I'm done. See, um, see you in chapter two. I will, um, I will let you, I will do more lecture uh, in chapter two and chapter two is a bit longer, okay? And we'll, we will get longer, longer, longer uh, lecture uh, later in the future. Okay, thank you and bye-bye.